Hello everyone, Say Jordan here, episode 5. We got property to women, so we got more workforce ratio. We don't really need it right now, but it is beneficial, so we're going to take it. We're going to also start working towards the police, because we haven't done this at all, uh, at, <laughs> at all, at all. Uh, we only got a 30% chance right now with this current government, so we may, because uh, we don't have the landowners in, I really don't want to get them in anyway, so we may just uh, play around with the 13% for a little bit. And uh, another big thing that's happening is that there's war going on. There's a big war, uh, which is really interesting. The Great Qing versus uh, the good old Great Britain. So it, it's kind of a big war. Uh, it didn't start with these two, but uh, it actually started with Siam. So the little piece that we didn't quite finish off, uh, these two are fighting over. And now the Great Qing, what they want to do, uh, what it looks like is they want to become recognized as part of their war. And then... Uh, Great Britain, of course, just wants Siam. So we'll see what happens. We we sided on the 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 side of uh, Siam, but didn't quite join the war. Uh, we'll have to see because now if the Great Qing starts getting really beaten up, uh, maybe there's a time for us to try to get a little piece as well from the Great Qing. We'll have to see. So we have a pretty good fight going on right now. We're going against the Great Qing. It's uh, pretty ballsy, but we're giving it a shot. Uh, Russia is also uh, going against them. Well, uh, one of their smaller states, so they're involved in it or whatever. But um, we'll see how this happens. There's another diplomatic play going on. Uh, it's kind of going in our favor. We're, we're wrecking them as far as uh, it goes to military tech. Their military tech is not very good at all. Um, and actually, they're running out of supplies, which is even better. But their uh, line infantry and mobile artillery, right, where we are much better. So we are using our skirmish infantry and our shrapnel artillery and you know we have good medical so it's working out pretty good we're actually winning we're pushing in uh, so if we win this war we may get one state with a lot of people but this could cause a ton of turmoil so we'll see we actually won the war against the great ching we held the line italy came in couldn't do much our boats were pretty decent wow and we're going to be making a lot of money. So we have a diplomatic pack where we're going to be making money from the Great Ching. War reps? Don't tell me that's the number. What? 63,000? Are, are you serious? That's 10% of their income. Oh, what? There's no way it can stay this high. So I just noticed we're number three in the world for gold. Uh, Peru, Bolivia is number one. Russia is actually number two. And we're number three. So we got to see if we can push those numbers up a little bit. We're also uh, potentially going to take Dynam. But it uh, looks like it's going to cause a war with Russia. However, their military is pretty weak. Uh, at least the tech is. So we'll see if we could do this. They'd have to come in, do a naval invasion. So we may go for that next. We also have a small revolution going. I'm trying to enact no migration controls this way for our new state. Uh, we could have this population move around a little bit in the rest of our country. That would really help. Um, so we're going to try to do that and push it. But if the revolution gets too hot, we'll end up backing off there. We would like to get the multiculturalism, but we can't do it right now, which is pretty interesting because usually it's the intelligentsia that helps support this if we look here underneath the laws. However, what the difference is, is that the leader themselves of the intelligentsia here is a reformer. What this means is they endorse cultural exclusion and they're only neutral to multiculturalism. So that's why it's not showing up and why we can't choose it right now. So hopefully this will change soon. Well, we did a diplomatic play and I didn't think this would happen so easily. I thought Russia was going to come in, but we ended up getting a nom for free. So that was it. They backed off. That was it. Dynam backs down and we're done. So that's another state underneath our control. No migration controls have passed. The state that we just took over from Great Ching can now, uh, their people can move within our country, which is really good. So, uh, yeah, we got, just got to get some more laws going, uh, hopefully multiculturalism at some point. So we're switching our direction a little bit. We're going to be building a bunch of universities. What we want to do is get our tech all the way up as uh, to our max, at least. And then we're going to keep working on our literacy to get that even higher. We're at 71 right now. Uh, we could have a max of 119. So we're going to work on that for sure. Because what we want to do is right now, we are not at trench infantry, which uh, Britain is and some of the greater powers. So we got to start to match that. Uh, we are only at skirmish infantry, so we want to get there. It's 1906. We haven't done much regarding war in this 10-year period. A lot of it has been trying to deal with internal strife, such as 
uh, revolutions, uh, getting our market kind of straightened out. We no longer are getting the war reps from the Great Ching, so that's starting to hurt a little bit and eat into our reserves. But, however, we did go our GDP from 30 million to 56 million, which is a nice increase. Our population went from 10 million to 20 million, so we doubled our population during that time. Uh, and keeping our standard of living pretty close from 14 to 14.2 is really good. Uh, so now we're going to keep trying to get that higher so we can get more loyalists over and get these radicals out and get the revolution uh, under control. Our literacy actually also went up a little bit from 45 to 48. And we went from 21 in the world to 12 in rank. And this is, uh, I think we get to 11 is the highest. I think we could get to uh, within our, nope, limiting to them to the maximum score of 12 in the world. So yeah, we are the highest we can. So that's another war that we're going to have to do is try to become recognized. And I think we could uh, shoot up a little bit higher but our you know our, our uh, prestige is not the highest um so we need to work on that as well a lot of wars are breaking out britain's involved this is the biggest one britain versus italy where we have uh, also the u.s joining on the british side and we got the great ching on the italian side so this is going to be pretty interesting this may be a time for us to push for recognition we'll see we now have regulatory bodies, an event popped up, so now we'll have a minus 20% dangerous working condition. So it's not a bad one. It's a pretty decent event. It's going to make people a little upset, but uh, not too bad. At least the training unions will be happy. The war is going well, and we have dedicated police force, so things are going uh, going good. So that finally passed. It took a long time. It took quite a few years, but now we finally have one. Our bureaucracy tanks yet again, so we're going to need even more. So the communists and liberal parties just got formed right in the middle of our big war, so which is fine. Uh, people are actually pretty happy about it. So now we got the communist, conservative, and liberal party. We won. We are now recognized. We changed to the Khmer Empire. We are no longer just Cambodia, which is really interesting. I didn't know that that happens. And then we also conquered Mekong, so we're a little bit stronger. So that's it. We uh, took the war since Great Ching was uh, going against Great Britain. It was a good time. Their troops were definitely weaker than ours. And even though they had more and more people, we uh, we did it. I mean, we had we had enough troops to be able to do it and hang back with regiments. It was the front line was here. Um, yeah, if the AI came in a little bit harder, maybe towards the borders, it would have been tough. But overall, uh, that's it. We won. So in 1908. We are now recognized. So now they're recognized. I want some prestige, but I also want electricity for our people. Let's try to get the standard of living up and see if we can get in the top 10 uh, in the world. That's our goal. And then if we can keep creeping up, that'll be awesome towards the end of the game. So we did it. We're nine in the world. We passed Russia really quick. All of a sudden, uh, some changes in our industry. So the biggest thing now is that we got a little bit of electricity coming in. Uh, we're doing a lot more explosives. We also did a big shift. So your prestige is really impacted a lot by your military. Um, I would say probably it's one of our biggest values right now. Let's, let's, let's actually look at that real quick, um, and see, because as you break this down, um, yeah, our biggest totals right now, right. Is 190 from our army and 60 from our Navy. Those are our biggest numbers. Uh, I mean, GDP does help a hundred percent too. So you want to have a healthy economy, but your military, if you can support it, helps a lot with your prestige. So now uh, that we did that and some changes, we could, we're we in the top 10 and maybe now we can make it to the top 5 is our next goal. Let's see. Another war has started. All we wanted to do was take Sintang so we can have some more gold mines. Which eventually what I want, really want to do is get this one where we have 3 more gold mines. But that's okay. So we're just trying to do that. And guess who steps in? But the Great Ching again. So that's fine. Let them do what they want. Their uh, military is like garbage compared to ours now. So they still have line infantry where now all of our uh, all of our infantry are trench and uh, we have siege artillery. So we'll be able to hold this and if not push this and what we're going to do, uh, you know, we're going to sweeten the pot for ourselves by we're going to take another land. We're going to also conquer uh, one of their lands up here. This may be a mistake. It's 3 million peasants that are not our people. Again, we won't be able to probably core these before the end of the game, but maybe we'll take it and just, uh, it's got good coal mines and sulfur, which isn't bad, and a ton of opium fields. Uh, Great Ching's land is kind of broken. I think there might need to be some balancing going on. Just to give you a sense of how the war is going, look at our regular troops with their siege compared to their old cannons. 
uh, this is, you know, <laughs> this is our troops versus theirs. And I mean, it's a huge difference. Uh, 37 offense to 135 defense. So they're trying to break through. So hopefully what we're going to get out of this is some more land. So we already took over uh, our actual war goal, right? Sintang. And then we're going to get a little bit more from the Great Ching. And we're going to get hopefully war reps. So we'll see how it turns out. We won the war, so we got the land that we wanted, but we also got extra land from Great Ching as well as war reps, so this is awesome. Well, I would say we're going to keep this an unincorporated state because it's going to cost 1,900 bureaucracy to take, uh, and in 20 years, it's really not worth it. So we're going to keep it unincorporated, and hopefully we'll get some people moving out of this area into ours. So we'll really just use them for uh, their resources as well as their population. It's 3 million. So hopefully they'll start to migrate down. We have no migration controls into the other areas and we'll just not do any urban buildings because those are the ones that really make the money. And if we need resources uh, like cheaply, then we'll do uh, some coal and sulfur and things like that out of here. So our infamy was a little bit high, but we still, I uh, wanted to go for a little bit more gold. Here we were able to get another two gold. Uh, just to pick it up. And then, of course, Great Ching came in. Um, so the things haven't changed that much. It's only been a couple months. So I know our tech are going to be fine. So I'm going to go for uh, something a little bit different this time. We're going to transfer the vassalage or uh, I think they're probably a tributary or whatever um, of Korea pr pretty much over to us. So why not? So we'll, we'll do that. As long as nobody else gets involved, we'll be in uh, good shape here. And uh, it'll be just even more income for us. We did it. Public health insurance passed. So that's it. The monks are out. Uh, they're not going to be too thrilled about it, but it's fine. Uh, and now we could actually increase the health system uh, without making the monks stronger. So we'll be doing that. Uh, maybe. I don't know. We have so many people. The health system doesn't matter as much now. Uh, this was when we had a small population. But now that we got millions of people that are coming in and ones actually that were discriminating, uh, which is what I really don't want to do. I want to be able to choose multiculturalism, but I can't because we still have that person uh, that's in the interest group that won't allow me to uh, to do this. We have nobody who's willing to support it. The killer known as the Bangkok Ripper, who has uh, long plagued the state of Bangkok, has finally been arrested. So that's good. We got the bastard. So you get some extra authority for five years. It's nice. To win this fight, we were kind of tricky. We did a naval invasion. We were able to actually fight off, which was crazy. Uh, <laughs> the Great Ching there. Navy is pretty much equal to ours. Uh, we have a smaller fleet, and luckily it only caught uh, a portion of them. So we were able to fight them off, and we were able to do a naval landing. And now we're taking over the capital. Uh, so you have to do this sometimes, especially if the war goal... Uh, won't tick down, right? So that they wouldn't transfer this unless we had their capital. So this worked out really good that they were on the coast. Um, and I started to realize this as we were eating in. It was like, wow, uh, you know, they weren't ticking down and we're getting close. So now we should be able to win this war. But yeah, something uh, definitely to keep an eye on. And the peace deal was accepted. So we now have Joseon or pretty much Korea under our control. And we've also got our land. So that's it. We beat up Great Ching yet again. Uh, now we're set up for naval invasion against them as well. So if we need to do this again, which I'm pretty sure we will, we'll just repeat <laughs> the same steps we just did. We went a little bit over. It's 1917. Our GDP grew from 56 million to 112 million. So we definitely uh, more than doubled, which is great. Our population also, again, almost, well, pretty much doubled. It's almost 40 million. We were at 20 million so that's really uh good as well problem is that really hurt our standard of living it was tough to get it past uh 15 but we're at 15.5 so it's not too bad but it'd be nice to get that a little bit higher our literacy is at 60 percent, which is really really good so we have a lot of people that are reading which is very very nice and that helps with our tech our tech is actually in pretty good shape overall uh, we're getting close to almost having our max here uh, now. No, nope. we got a lot of people still <laughs> with the literacy. That adds a lot to your total innovation, so we need more universities. So we'll be working on that. We went from 12 in the world to 9 in the world, so we're in the top 10. I'd like to see we get in the top 5. I don't think we'll be able to in time. I don't know. We're going to try, so we're going to push our military a little bit. Uh, maybe go against Great Ching a few more times. I'm not sure what else to take. Put it down in the comments below if you guys had any suggestions at this point what you would do. Um, I'm not sure what I could do to just kind of get past this. It's tough. I had a, a, a slow start because I was uh, underneath, you know, Dynam for so long. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think, and we're going to continue. We'll make this uh, video a little bit longer than the rest because we'll probably wrap up the game in this. So we're doing... 
doing a big war. I'm going to try to puppet the Philippines. Great Britain came in, so it's going to be kind of close. So we'll have to see because Great Britain is not number one right now, but they're number two. So it's going to be interesting. During the war, proportional taxation has happened, which is really good. Uh, we make a lot more money. It was a crazy amount. We went from like having no money to 47,000 positive in cash flow. So we got to spend, spend, spend. We actually won the war, got the peace treaty. We puppeted the Philippines, fought back Britain and conquered even more land. Uh, something that we've been wanting for actually quite a long time because only because it had a lot of lead. <laughs> but that was it. And look at that cool flag. Uh, uh, it's kind of confusing, but there you go. So officially they are our puppet now. Uh, so that's great. And we know that we're strong enough to actually fight Britain back, at least on our own terms. Their defense is super strong though. So uh, we do need to kind of get our offense up if we're going to attack even more there. But uh, yeah, I can't believe we did it. So it's more money for us. We're bigger and a lot more. Um, and we didn't get the land that I thought we were going to get for the lead. I forgot um, since it was the first thing and, and they kind of pieced out uh, that we didn't get get that piece. But that, that's totally fine. So we got primary school. It's there. We've done it. It took a long time, but the kids are finally not working anymore. So this is good. We can now uh, up our education a little bit more too, which can't hurt. We are max on our education, so we're going to try to do that. We're spending a lot of money trying to do a little bit of a war here. We'll see how it turns out. We now have a new puppet. Korea's our puppet. They were a protector for a while, so I wanted to get more money. Well, actually, I wanted to get money because Protector does not give any money. Didn't realize that when uh, we took it over from the Great Qing. So this is good. We did that. And now we're at war with uh, Russia, which will probably just wipe peace. The war ended and multiculturalism has passed. I didn't think this was going to happen. During the war, we got an event where we were able to change out the leader, the intelligentsia interest group. So we did that right away. Uh, then we're able to do multiculturalism and we got it to pass. So we were getting everything right at the end of the game. It's getting there. We had a great war, but you know what happened? Who came in? But the Great Ching again, but that's fine. Uh, we were able to get East Borneo, which is awesome. So we got oil. Uh, I started producing those right away. And then we'll start using those for our military. So we got uh, up to 22 oil rigs here. Hopefully get enough people kind of migrating out and moving around here. So that's not bad. Out of the fight, we also got Kutai uh, as a <laughs> puppet. So we did that as well as John B as a puppet. So we got even more lands out here. We may not, uh, you know, own them, own them, but we, well, we do, you know, pretty much. Uh, I mean, now they're all part of the market. Our market is much bigger now. Uh, if you look at all the members here, it's great. So that's good. Uh, we're making tons of money. So we're just gotta, I don't think we're going to be able to in time, make it. It's just too hard to get to five. We need, uh, we need a lot more GDP, which is very hard to do. We pretty much got to beat the Great Ching, and that's going to be really tough. I mean, we keep going to war. We could, we go to war with them. That's not a problem, but uh, getting enough prestige is just uh, really the killer here. Um, we Our army projection is good, but I mean, I could go even more. So we'll have to see. Um, I'll, I'll try my best, but I'd like to get in the top five. That's my goal before the end of the game. We did it. We held back the Great Ching, and now we puppeted Japan. So things are looking good. We have a three years left. We did it. We're number five in the world. We made it in the top five. Can we make it in the top three before the end of the game? I don't think so. It's going to be really, really hard to do, but we're going to give it a shot. We now have universal suffrage. So that has passed. So that's good. It's one of the last laws that were left and everyone now has an equal vote. Well, we're going out with a bang. This is what you get for being a pariah. Austria, Hungary, number one in the world with France, number two in the world. Uh, all kind of come together and want to beat me up. So we'll have to see what happens. Try to break us up, but I think we should be fine. We'll try our best. Man, that was an exciting end, but we came out on top. We didn't get broken apart. It was uh, the war was going on, but there was no way we we're dragging on. We we're defending too well. So in summary, starting as Cambodia, I think we did pretty well. We ended up as a great power, fifth in the world. We weren't really close. Well, we were in between five and four. It was pretty close there for a while. Um, a lot of it came down to our military and the last little fight there, the ditch effort for Austria, Hungary, as well as France to break us apart, but, uh, they quite weren't able to, we had 180 battalions pretty much with, uh, 274 conscripts didn't really use the conscripts at all. And maybe that's something I should do a little bit more. We had 30 flotillas, 206 million in GDP. We pretty much 
doubled what we had. I think the last time we checked, our population again was uh, grew a little bit, but wasn't anything crazy. Uh, 46 million. Trying to keep up that standard of living though was very tough. We're at 15.4. Uh, it wasn't the best, but it wasn't uh, definitely the worst in the world. It was just it, it was tough to be able to hold up with all these people. Uh, we just getting them the big rush of like four and eight million people like towards the end there was it was quite a bit. It was almost a quarter of our population. So it was it was it was quite a bit going on there. Literacy 70 percent. I'm happy to end up with that. Uh, we have our state religion, everything here. It's nothing important to look at, but our. Uh, Trade unions ended up with the most clout at the end. Military, of course, because we're fighting a lot. Intelligentsia. Politics, we did get workplace safety office. Investment level number one. Education, we went up to four. Law enforcement got to three. Um, health, I didn't worry about too much. And the same thing with the safety office because our population was so big. We really didn't need to preserve more people if anything less was a little bit better um our home affairs at five just to try to keep the radicals under i'm hoping in the next patch uh this will be better so we'll be trying the next version in the next run and see uh if things are a little bit more under control because it, it seems like radicals just come out of nowhere for no reason uh laws we got the monarchy interventionism as well as right of assembly universal suffrage protectionism and regulatory bodies multiculturalism that's like broken it's, it's way too strong i think proportional taxation is very good and compulsory uh primary school we have freedom of conscience no uh yeah colonial affairs i probably should have done one here uh, just to get a little bit maybe more resources out of our because we weren't able to quite, uh, you know, core everybody uh, or incorporate everybody. Coring is from EU4. Uh, no social security because I think that's broken as well, at least in this version. So we'll see in the latest one and we'll try that. Um, I've tried it before and it kind of really screws up your economy. So we'll, we'll, we'll try that uh, maybe in the next one. Professional armies, great public schools, no migration controls, guaranteed liberties, public health insurance, as well as uh, slavery ban. So that's all of our politics. At the end, we ended up with quite a few puppets, I think, you know, not too bad. We ended up with Jambi, the Japanese shogunate, which was really nice. Uh, we got Korea or Josen. Uh, probably saying that wrong kutai as well as the philippines so we had a decent amount of puppets that helped too a lot with our prestige and getting our ranking up as well as just the amount of free money you get uh getting puppets so once you get big enough uh, i definitely recommend and you get like enough resources and you feel comfortable uh puppeting is very very good right now uh in the game as well and uh yeah we were a pariah they they tried their best to break us apart but couldn't do it so that's our latest run if you have any questions put it down in the comments below or you'd like to see me play a certain country put it down down there maybe i'll get to it hit that like subscribe notification button they're free and if you made it this far i really do appreciate it as always for the swarm